when I see people's watch collections both online, in rural life, and what people are wearing, I'm often surprised at how many watches that are just repeated. These collections that all seem to contain the same watches, watches that I would consider to be popular or the obvious choices. Now there is nothing wrong with popular watches, there's nothing wrong with these obvious choices. They are popular for a reason and people love them. But when I look at my own personal collection, my favourite watches in my collection, the most worn watches in my collection, the watches that I know are going to stay longer term, are watches that I would consider not the obvious choice. Hello, you're watching James. My name's James. You're watching me. And I am talking about watches. And I'm saying today, don't buy the obvious watch. But of course, I'm not actually saying that. You buy whatever watch that you like, even if it's the most popular watch that is on the market, if you like it and you enjoy it. In fact, I have popular watches in my collection, watches like my Tudor Black Bay 58, probably one of the me most popular watches in recent years. I've had previous popular watches in my collection like the Seiko SKX009 and I even own the Seiko Saab 033. Both lovely watches. But as I look at my watches in my collection, my favourite watches, the ones that I do wear the most, they are not what I would consider the obvious choices. In fact, I rarely see them in other collections. In fact, most of them I never see in other people's collections. And I have to admit, I slightly like that. I slightly like that they are not obvious watches. But that is not the reason why I bought them, and that is not the reason why I love them so much. I love them so much because they are incredible watches. And I want to try and share my experiences with how I found those watches, and why I think you should consider trying to find some of these not-so-obvious watches for yourself. So let me share with you the watches that I'm talking about that are in my collection, like my favourite watch of all time, my Hamilton Jazzmaster Traveller 2 GMT. A watch that I very occasionally see a picture online, in fact, I actually found this one by seeing a picture online, but I just don't see this in other collections. When you search this watch on the internet, you don't often find many reviews of it. It's not something that you often see out in the wild. In fact, I've never seen one of these out in the wild, but it has turned out to be my favourite watch. It is my benchmark watch in regards to thinking about how much I like a watch or not, because I love this watch, and it's one of my most worn watches in my collection. I then took this idea of finding a not so obvious watch and I found my IWC Mark 16 Spitfire, a watch that I adore. In fact, I think I like it as much as my Hamilton and that is saying a lot because I love my Hamilton. And I would not have found it if I hadn't had this sort of thought about what could I try and find that perhaps isn't obvious from this particular brand. I also found my Oris Artelia, what I consider to be my tuxedo watch, is also not what I think about when I think of Oris. But I think it's one of the best looking watches I've ever come across and it is a beautiful watch to own, wear and have in my collection. And then there's my Mont Blanc Nicolas Rusek. This one's probably a little bit better known than some of the other watches that I'm talking about today, but certainly I've never seen it in somebody else's collection and I certainly have never seen one in the wild. So this is what I would also consider a not so obvious watch. And I took this idea as well when I then went back to IWC and I found my vintage reissue. This is a beautiful watch that costs more than any other watch in my collection, which is a little bit shocking still to me, but I love it so much. And it is certainly not something that I'd ever seen before. And it wasn't until I used my little method that I'd use to find these not so obvious watches that I came across that particular IWC. So I've started using this method to find these watches. And it is not a hard method at all, but there's a couple of things that are worth noting that have allowed me to find these watches. Now, I always use Chrono24 for this. I don't actually end up buying the watches from Chrono24 very often. However, I think it's a good site to use because of the vast amount of watches that are on the site. So what I do is I think about a brand that I like, and often I'll think about a brand that I don't really think about. I try to think about a brand perhaps that I haven't considered before, and I'll search that brand. Today I'm going to show you IWC because it is a good example about how I found one of my favourite watches. So I literally just search IWC. I don't put in any models, I don't put in any other filters. And this is the first part, don't use filters. I understand it's very easy to then sort of go, well I only want a certain case size or a certain movement or a certain year or a certain condition, but don't use filters. And the reason behind that is because the people that are selling these watches on sites like Chrono24 sometimes don't put the correct details 
onto their listing. So you might skip over that or you might filter out a watch that you want to actually find. So don't use filters. Just search from low price to high price. And then comes the second piece of advice. Look at the watch picture, do not look at the price. Like literally phase out the price in your head, just look at the picture and start scrolling. Look at the watches and wait till you find one that pops out at you that says, wow, that's amazing. And then look at the price. And then see if the price is actually something that is achievable for you. Now I've done this lots and on many occasions, I've come to this watch that I thought, wow, that's amazing. And then the price has been massive. So it doesn't always work every time you do it. But like this IWC, when I started scrolling and not looking at the price, this Spitfire jumped off the page for me. It absolutely grabbed my attention. And when I looked at the price, it certainly wasn't a cheap watch, but it was an achievable price for me. And I never thought I'd ever own an IWC at this point. I never thought I would own an IWC, partly because of the prices of them, and partly because of the designs, and perhaps I didn't feel like they were worth the money for a, a simple pilot watch for those higher prices. But when I saw the IWC with the details on the dial at a price that I could manage, then it grabbed my attention and it kept my attention and I ended up buying one. So I used this method and found one of my favorite watches in my collection. Now, why have I mentioned that you shouldn't look at the price as you're scrolling? There's a particular reason for that. Because when I look at watches and I see something that looks okay, and then I see the price and it's super affordable, I then sort of almost convince myself that, oh, it's not just okay, I like that watch because I can really afford that watch. And I don't want price to be a part of this reasoning because I don't want to convince myself to buy a watch that is only okay. I'm not looking for okay watches. I'm looking for amazing watches. So don't look at that price because it can sometimes sort of bias you about the watch that you're looking at. Let's look a little bit closer at that IWC Spitfire. And I'm going to ask you a question. Besides on my channel, have you ever seen this watch before? Have you ever seen it in somebody's collection? Have you seen somebody else reviewing it? Have you ever seen somebody wearing this particular watch? Have you seen it pop up on social media? Now, there's some of you out there that say, may say, yes, I think I've seen that watch, but I'm gonna say that most people that have either not ever seen it or may have only seen it once or twice. And I doubt anybody's seen it in a collection because it's not the obvious choice. But for me, it's actually turned out to be my favorite IWC. And it just represents this idea of not always buying what is popular or what is obvious and looking into back catalogs of watches. Some of the best watches that I've ever come across, these watches that I'm showing you are back catalog watches. Now, when I buy them, I am careful because they're all going to be generally secondhand. So I'm very careful how much money I spend on them. I keep in mind that if I buy them, I may need to service them just like I did with my Mont Blanc but I bought that at a price that I could then justify spending the extra money servicing. So I keep that into my sort of idea of the equation of how much money I'm spending on them. And this is something that I am going to be doing continually throughout my watch journey, trying to find some of these not so obvious watches. And this is exactly how I do that. This is how I try and find them. Now, every time I do this search online, I often either don't find something or I find a watch that is way outside of my price range, but occasionally, Occasionally, I find these amazing watches. And these watches are going to be featured on my channel and they're going to be continually being a part of my watch journey. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I'd really like to know, have you got a watch in your collection that you would consider and not the obvious choice? A watch that you love, but it's not something that you've seen in other people's collections. Leave me a comment. I'd love to know what it is. But then, maybe watch one of these other videos.